Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Taurus. If Taurus is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right. I just lost me sick. <laughs> oh goodness. Uh, and so this is a bonus reading for Taurus and tonight our card is the page of Pentacles, which is similar to the princess of discs in the Thoth system. And so let's take a look and see what these tea leaves have to say. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. And you can hear Pudgy yowling. <laughs> I don't know. You know, ever since we moved in here, he used to do it at the other house. He's always done it, honestly. Since he... I first met this boy, my cat, he, um, if you've seen Pudgy on my posts or in the readings before, he's always been a big yowling type, type of cat. And, um, and, uh, at this house, he really likes to do it even more because when he does it in the hallways, it echoes and he just goes on. And on and on. And so don't worry about him though. He is he has attention and he has been fed a few times today actually. He um he just really likes to hear his own voice, I think. Okay, let's see here. So immediately as we started this reading, I got the impression, I got the distinct impression that this is a place where um, you're coming into kind of a new dynamic, either in family or domestically. Um, maybe somebody moving in, maybe somebody moving out, maybe you're moving in general. Um, but the dynamic is, is shifting. And although you love change as a Taurus, you're in constant movement, it seems like, um, this feels quite difficult. I almost feel like, um... I almost feel like it, it seems like you're, you are, you have the impression, you have the perception. I'm trying to find the right word here. The perception that you are giving up some um, personal freedom in the way that you're living for this shift to happen. Um, and it leads me to believe that maybe you will be taking care of somebody. Now, I have a person up here and then a smaller person over here. They're holding an illuminating light, like a candle, right? Um, so with this movement, it seems like there is a lot of spiritual evolution for you, okay? Um, I wonder if this is like you're going to be taking care of a parent, or maybe like an adult child moving back in. Maybe you will be taking care of your grandchildren. Um, now, I know that we're going into summer and a lot of kids are out of school and there are a lot of situations where, yeah, we're going to be taking care of, you know, family members, having them stay with us. Um, my niece is staying with us uh, on and off this summer. And... Um, and it does, it changes the dynamic of the house, but I feel like this one is like really more, um, it feels involved. Okay. It's not like I have a teenager staying with me. She does her own thing, right? <laughs> For the most part. Um, but this feels like, yeah, taking care of maybe like a young child or a parent that is ailing somebody who, um, 
is coming back into the household, maybe has been through, um, you know, some kind of uh, difficult situation, maybe an injury, maybe they are getting divorced, your adult child. Um, so there's a lot of emotions there. So I do think this, this is an opportunity to embrace this shift, right? It's not easy. It's not always going to be fun. Um, but it's kind of a real blessing, um, even if it doesn't necessarily feel like that. Now, I don't think that you're expressing this like you're, you know, overtly angry about it. But I do think inside it's kind of like, oh, the, you know, there's people coming into the home and and, uh, you know, the tranquility and peace of things is maybe going to be shifted a little bit. Um, but you will find your new normal. And I think that this is an important time. The universe will always provide for us what we need if we understand what that is or not. Okay. Now we also have the deer. Uh, so immediately I know this is a most sacred moment. Um, this is a moment where you are being guided into a new part of your life. Um, it again, might not feel like that. It might not seem like this is a rite of passage where it's very formal. We know, you know, it's like when you graduate school or when you get married or you have your first kid or, you know, whatever, these are rites of passage that are very distinct. Okay. Um, but that's not to say that these other transitions in our life are not as important because they can be, but you know, they might be slow burning. So we don't notice like this is a big thing. You know, this is a big shift. And, um, you know, I absolutely see you, uh, yeah, being kind of resistant, but as it sets in, I think that you will really start to thrive in this new situation. Um, now, we also have, it looks like, the lobster or the crawdad. Okay, so from the, the moon card. And um, I immediately feel like there is a sense of melancholy in the house. Okay, so I don't think this is you. I think that this is maybe the person that you are going to be around. Uh, more often. Okay. Um, and it feels like I, I just keep getting this, this intense feeling of a lot of emotionality, having been through some things that have been difficult for them and you kind of being the one in this receptive mode of like, yes, I am, I'm going to embrace you. I'm going to be here for you. I'm going to be somebody who's consistent and, um, and de devoted to, uh, you know, your healing or your well being, uh, making sure that they kind of assimilate into a new routine and, um, help them kind of, um, you know, potentialize their time and their efforts, their abilities. And so, um, yes, I look at this and I, and I feel like, yeah, it'll, it will bring an energy into the home and it might be difficult at times because, you know, being a Taurus, you just want to get things done. You don't want to kind of toil in, um, these places where it can feel very slow and glacial, right? It's just, if you've ever been in a state of melancholy or depression, you know that it's not something we just click our fingers and yeah, it's over. You know, um, I don't just pull myself out of bed and, and dust myself out and oh, I'm all better. It's all good. You know, when you're in it, when, when you're really in it, um, it's slow moving. It can feel like an open, airy, um, tundra, right? Like a very arid landscape and you just don't know where to go. It's like walking forever and ever pulling yourself through it. And sometimes you just don't want to keep going. You just want to, you know, whatever. Um, but 
you know, you can't force people, you can't push them to go faster. All you can do when you're around somebody like this is lend your support. Try to be understanding. Now, you also need to keep boundaries and uphold rules to your home or to, you know, the situation that you're in. Of course. And having that structure can be helpful for people who are in depression as long as, you know, it is within reason. You can't expect um, somebody to just get over things. We don't live in that era anymore, hopefully, <laughs> you know, where it's like, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Um, I hope it's less and less of that in, in our homes, right? And more about working together to figure this thing out. Um, now, we have, it looks like two people dancing, we also, and I keep looking at this, it looks like a, um, a, pre, like a prehistoric whale or something. I, but when we have the whale, it is an immense psychic connection. Okay. So I do feel like there's this shift in situation, um, coming together with somebody who is so beloved. And that's what I think about a situation like this is that you might think, oh, it's going to really kind of um, throw a wrench into the way that I'm living, into my own routine. Um, you know, I will have even less time to do the things that I want to do or the things I need to do. Um, but we don't always see like this is an opportunity for us to be with somebody who we love and it might be different, especially if it's like uh, a family member, right? Who is older. Um, maybe they are having mobility problems or cognitive issues or, you know, whatever they're frustrated. They don't want somebody to take care of them. They don't want to be living somewhere that's not their own home. Um, there might be some resentment and anger and, and um, they do things differently and it's, you know, and it's difficult. It's hard. And it's, and it's also devastating because you're losing in some ways the person that you've known for so long. They're, they're different, you know. My acquired mother, and I'm not going to cry, Lenore, I'm not going to cry. <laughs> I'm going to stop myself from crying right now. Um, uh, she is recently diagnosed with Alzheimer's, although we knew, you know, for a while before, um, she's not even the same personality as she was, you know, 10 years ago, like not even close. Um, but she's still a wonderful person, right? I still love her and, um, dearly, dearly. And, uh, I try to spend as much time with her as I can. Um, and I am so lucky I get to see her on Sunday here again. Uh, you know, and it, I look forward to it, but you know, it is, it's hard. There's a mourning happening and the fear, you know, she's family to me. And, and, um, my husband, and I shout out to Devin Serpentero, uh, my husband, Paul over there is amazing. Um, and he, you know, he's on, he's come into the situation. This is, these people have been like my parents. They're actually my in-laws from my previous, uh, marriage. Um, but I can't, I, you know, was so young when I met them that they've become my parents over the last 20 years, 20 some years now. And my husband is so gracious. When I met him, I told him, you know, these are people who are my family. And um, I know it won't feel normal, but I need to have them in my life. And we have to figure this out. And I understand if it's too much. And he's been amazing. You know, he's very close to them as well. And, um, you know, having his support through this as well and just trying to figure out how are we going to support uh, her husband and who's like my dad. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's a lot. And so I understand what this can feel like, right, to some degree. And, <clears throat> you know, 
and you do. It feels sometimes um, too much. You just don't know where to begin, right? Um, but then there are moments where there's such joy and such laughter. My daughter had her birthday last weekend. Um, we had a birthday party, and my mom was here. And and sometimes, and some part of the party, she was upset, and you know, she's having some emotions. But then there were moments where, um, just surrounded by the family we've all created, and um, decided we choose each other. All of these people we've chosen each other, and the happiness and the laughing and the hugging and and I feel this you know this energy here for you this uh you know this this elation in it and um and not realizing that sometimes our struggles they bring us so much closer than we expected you know there there are always blessings in the troubles I have to, oh, I'm not going to cry. <laughs> I'm not going to cry. Um, there are always blessings in the troubles and it's hard to see that. It is so hard sometimes. It just is impossible. And I get that. And I, I struggle with that myself. I think sometimes, why? Why am I constantly cursed with these awful things happening in my life and around me, adjacent to me? Why? What is going on? But then I realize this is life. This is the nature of being. Nothing stays the same. And it is all up, it's all up to me to figure out how can I perceive this? How can I react to this? What can I do with this? I'm not going to squander it, even if it feels like the worst. I'm going to make something of it. I'm going to take my opportunities where I can. And those opportunities, they lead to the divine. They lead to God. They lead to goddess. They lead to that most authentic self, that beloved light, that emanation of the cosmos that lives within each of us. And so, yes, there are blessings in the troubles. There always will be. That is not to romanticize suffering or trouble or any of that. No, but it is part of what happens. If you are alive and in a body and conscious, you will have troubles. But that's not the end of it. That's not the end of the story. It's only a little part of it. And it's up to us what we do with it. And you're making the dang best of your situation. And that is self-evolution. All right. Let's take a look over here. Let's see, we have E's. All of these E's today. In my other reading, I had a bunch of E as well. E, E. A name, it seems, that starts with an E or has a prominent E in it. I'm going to put this over here. Even here, it looks like, and I'm trying to figure out. Um, it looks like C E R. S or another E? There's an E up here too. Ceres, maybe? I don't know. So we have it looks like, and here, interesting. It reminds me of the mushroom on um, Mario, right? The, the one up. And to me, it immediately says, uh, yeah, through this work, you are elevating your life. You are extending your experience, um, creating depth to the experience, not on autopilot, right? You are in the thing. You are very present in your own life. 
And that's a beautiful thing. Even if it is something that isn't, you know, it's painful or something that's difficult, something that can be frustrating, but it brings you in. You're right there. You're not just kind of idling through. So we have that, that one up there for you. We also have a bird of peace. We have two birds of peace, two doves. Spirit is with you. Look for the signs because they will be there. Look for the synchronicities because they will be there. I feel that you, there is a sense of being quite protected. Now we have, a, we have six, 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 okay? Or nine, nine, nine. Um, either way, and I know 666, we think of yeah, the devil or whatever. Um, now, the devil card or the devil energy to me is one of breaking through the old. Destroying the old conventions. Bringing down that dogmatic thinking. Letting go of the stinking thinking as we call in... Uh, in AA, they use that term a lot. Stinking thinking. When we go into a situation and we think we already know what it's going to be like. Here's a good example. If you're in America, you've probably been to DMV. And we think, oh, gosh, I have to go to DMV. I'm going to go sit there. It's going to take forever. Everybody's going to be in a bad mood. It just sucks. Uh, you know, it's the worst. And so, you know, you go in, it's going to be a self-fulfilling self prophecy most of the time. Well, once in a while, you know, you might be surprised. You might meet somebody who's really cool, really interesting. You might see some strange things that you've never seen before. Um, you know, you might meet something or somebody magical. Hey, it might even be really quick. I can't advocate more for living rule um, than going to a rural DMV. Um, I would say there are three of them within like, I don't know, 100 miles of me. I've been to all of them throughout the years and none of them have a wait that's more than 20 minutes. It's ridiculous. I don't know. I When I first got my license in California, it took, I think, like four hours. It was a long experience. <laughs> um, but, you know, so that's the thing. We go into situations. We already think we know what's going to happen, how we're going to feel, if we're going to like it. And then we, we've set the energy and it usually will play out that way because we're already locked in. But if we let our mind be open, if we have a little bit of doubt about, yeah, maybe I'm going to be wrong. We'll see. We'll see what's going to happen here. Right? And to me, that's that devil energy. Letting go of like, yeah, I need my, you know, I need to know what this is. I need to know exactly how this is going to go. I'm going to hold on tight to these beliefs. No, the devil card says, nah, -uh. no, 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 no. You have no idea. Let's see what happens. And so I see those numbers and I think, yeah, that's it. It's all new. Everything is new that's happening right now. So let it be new. Let it be new. Meet it with curiosity, with wonder, with hope. That will change so much. It really will. All right, we have the Wild Offering Oracle cards, and I'm gonna go ahead and just flip on through. I'm gonna stop where it feels right. Work, work. I am, or I'm now available to receive all who can benefit from my work. Use me to relieve suffering on the planet. May I, or may all who need to find me, no, 
May all who need me find me. The divine is my complete source for all prosperity and will provide. I'm going to start over. <laughs> I'm now available to receive all who can benefit from my work. Use me to relieve suffering on this planet. May all who need me find me. The divine is my complete source for all prosperity and will provide. This is, ex I mean, ex exactly what this reading is about. Those who need you will find you. You will be put in the position, right? Keep that heart open. Even when things get, oh, you know, just it's uh, inconvenience, right? I mean, it is. A lot of it is the inconvenience, but it's also very emotional. It can be emotional. All right, Taurus, I'm going to go ahead and tell you I love you because I do. And I thank you so much for letting me bring these messages to you. It's always such an honor. If you would be so kind as to like the reading the video, it really does help the channel so much. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. And if you... Um, and if you would like to leave a comment, please do. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, what else? I think that's it. I think that's it. I'm off. This is my last reading. Um, getting ready for the solstice coming up pretty soon here. And, uh, and yeah, yes. Just lots, lots of things to enjoy, to celebrate. Um, if you want to share, what are you doing for your solstice? If it's the summer or spring or no, I'm sorry, summer or winter. I know we hope we wish it was going into spring for you down there, um, in the Southern hemisphere, but I'd love to know, what are you going to do? Do you have any kind of celebration or tradition or, or whatever? Um, yeah. So anyways. All right, Taurus, I love you. Take care of yourself. We're going to talk in a few days from now. Good night, good night, good night.